Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm excited today to the point of being ecstatic with jubilation to have just a legendary family here. Um, Willie Norwood, whose uh, reputation precedes himself um, in the Church of Christ, in music, um, father of some of the greatest musicians that we know. Um, we've got Brandy, we've got Ray J, I mean, over 40 million albums sold. And then his granddaughter, who's kind enough to join us and one of three, and we're going to get into that, um, Sarai Smith. Thank you both for joining us. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> Sure. I wanted to kind of really just start at the beginning, and I know the beginning is the church, and, and I've heard you, Mr. Norwood, speak so much about that during our, our prior interviews, and how it acts as a good foundation, and we'll constantly bring it back to music. So let's talk about why that's such a good place to begin, and I love your own word because it's medical. It's a laboratory or like a petri dish. What do you mean when you say things like that about the church and music? Of when I say that, I, I mean that it's a place to grow uh, without the restraints and the, the, the limitations that maybe having a secular career would place upon you. It's a, it's a place and it is the breeding ground of all of the great singers, um, the, the, the church, because people are so encouraging in the church because one, we are commanded to be encouraging to one another <laughs> and having that encouragement and, and not being under the whole pressure of having to perform, it really allows an artist to really grow and to know and to be accepted and learn to accept others. Sure, so I'm gonna take that to you, Ms. Smith, in terms of people that you look up to, and, and there's no doubt that uh, Brandy would represent one of those people, and the love and the relationship and the support is so clear in all of the things that you post, any of the things you do together, but who else has acted as, a, and as an inspiration to you, uh, be they in the church or even out the church, in terms of developing some of your sound? Um, if it's not mom, it's my family. Uh, it's people that I normally listen to. I love, you know, uh, gospel music as well but definitely just taking inspiration from you know pops from my uncle from even my grandma you know like having such a like not only music savvy family but also business business savvy family it's like it's a blessing it's so amazing just to have so many opportunities just being in my family um but i take inspiration from everywhere anything i see anything i hear um, to find a, a sound or to write a song. I just kind of take it, kind of make it my own and then do whatever I feel um, musically. Sure. I think one of the reasons why the family represents so much excellence in music is because you, Mr. Norwood, just have it as such a base to really lay a strong foundation. I know you can't give all the secrets away because you're also a coach, but what are those <laughs> elements? We'll put it that way. What are just maybe one or two elements that you you strongly encourage musicians or even when you're working? I've watched, obviously, um, some of the stuff that you did with the other ministers of music over at Church of Christ. Christ, um, to, to really find and to sort of bring out what might just be a couple of those little elements that you think people can really grow upon in terms of trying to enhance their music? Well, I have, um, I studied when I was a young, I, and first went to, to uh, college, uh, I studied pre-medicine because I wanted to be a doctor. But in finding that, um, and that's good inspiration for being on your show too, by the way, mm -hmm. because I usually come from a physiological viewpoint when it comes to singing and teaching singing. I first, uh, <laughs> I have to honor number one, the design that we are 
we are divine and we were made from divinity. And since God made us, uh, the Bible says we are uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. And since you, since every singing is in every heart, singing is in every human being, that's the point in which I go. And so I teach singers, I teach them number one, their design and how to sing to their design, how to sing to how they are, how they are, are made, because we are all made to sing. Some people say, well, I can't sing, but everybody can sing unless you are medically um, uh, uh, impaired or something like that, or something is wrong. But singing is in every individual. Now, you can't teach talent. Sarah has, Sarah has talent. And so you can't teach that, but you can teach all of the motor skills and then teaching the motor skills, you have to come, I usually do, I come from a physiological approach. Sure, yes. And you jumped into some of our fire and I love it because many people know the show is called Music and Medicine. And so why I'm going to go there, but first with your talent. Let's talk about your fashion sense. It is impeccable. You know, I was watching, you always have to prep for these. So it's no secret. I was watching you and your boyfriend last night. The look at when y'all were like, okay, we're going to throw whipped cream on each other. First thing I was thinking about, not on that face. It did just kind of going to pretend. But, but tell us about, I know that you design and things like that. I want to talk about that and sort of where that came from and, and how you feel you've developed your eye and, and continue to. Um, well, I really, I've always loved fashion. Uh, what made me really want to design was uh, when maybe a year or two ago, I was a lot bigger than what I am now, but I felt that there was nothing made for me and my body and, or nothing, you know, it's like things that are made bigger normally become more expensive. And I know that if I wasn't in the place that I was in at the time, um, I wouldn't want to pay $55 for a t-shirt. So I wanted to design clothes that were cute, were trendy, were fashionable, but it was also really flattering for girls that are over a size extra large. And that's what made me wanting, that's what made me want to start designing. And then when I lost a lot of weight, I started seeing more options. And I was like, okay, so this is this is a bit new. I can, you know, go into a store and buy jeans which is new. And I, I developed sort of an eye and I kind of understood my body and what flatters me. And I just picked little things and things worked and, and people just started to respond to my outfits like they were responding to other Instagram worlds. And I was like, wait a minute, right. hold on. I was just putting on clothes that I didn't know would fit and then they fit and it was just this big, thing now that like everyone thinks that I have like the best, well, not the best, 
don't quote me on that but sure. everyone just feels that I have a good fashion sense and I'm like you know I'm just testing the waters just not yet just wait until I really get my little style on but yeah the the designing and the fashion is super important to me I love I love clothes it's a way that I express myself other than music and it's it's a passion I have too. Definitely have a little passion for fashion, just a little bit. <laughs> and those two of mine are so nice, and they <laughs> keep even crashing. Um, so, well, since you brought it up, we'll kind of start there, but but get back to to um, Granddad in a second. This industry is very intensely cruel, um, and that's why I wanted to start with the church when it comes to really accepting people for who they are and as they are. And it also places tremendous pressure, especially the time where people are working on their self-esteem. What types of ways do you feel that you really try to surround yourself in love and also continue that, that self-love so that you, if there is some negativity or, or some criticism, you don't, you don't internalize it? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely difficult because they, not, they don't only attack me and my character but it's how they attack the people around me. It's not only mom, it's grandma, it's pops, it's my uncle. It's every person in my family gets a little bit of the, the hate because of me and everything that I do. And I have to understand that in this industry or in business, even in general, in public, I represent a family that is known and I can't do everything. I can't be everywhere I have to really understand that people are going to look at me and they're going to automatically put pressure on me they're going to put place judge, judgment on me already like it's already in the cards it's just because of who my family is and I surround myself definitely I keep my circle very small I don't have many friends and I keep myself around people that are going to push me in the right direction instead of being kind of like people that are just going to be yes men and just say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're going to push me in the direction that I need to go. And this Rami would love. My family's always there. My mom always tells me not to read those comments. And I don't, I try not to, sometimes I peek, but it's, it's, it's what it is, what it is. People are going to be people. Everyone's going to have an opinion. So, I mean, no, yeah, something something we see. Yeah, back in the day, and you're probably too young to remember this comment, but there were a lot of famous um, people, actors and actresses, who would say, "I've never read my press clippings." That's what we used. Oh. To, that's what we used to say, um, because many of them realized that if I internalize any of that or absorb it in any type of way, it's not an energy that's good for me. So, really, clearly, what comes across so much in so much of the support that you provide is sort of that role as a shepherd. You're not trying to, to so push that it's all about control. You're, you're comfortable releasing those reins, but yet always sort of being there to, to guide the process. So let's talk about that a little bit with respect to, um, to B7, where, where you definitely um, got to um, be there and, and be the coach, but also just, just be the support because for so many families, I think it's so important for, for parents that, are proud of their kids, but not necessarily totally trying to control every single thing they do. Uh, talk to us about your philosophy behind that. Uh, I've always revered my uh, my my position n n number one as as a father. I've always revered that, and and I know that when. Uh, your responsibility grows as being a parent, you know, when you, when they are young, you are to rear them the best way you can uh, in an environment that breeds creativity, that, 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 that create positiveness and, and imagination. All of those things I try to put before them so that they could make good choices. Now, there are no perfect parents, therefore there are no perfect children. But the thing is, we can try to be our best selves in front of them, with them. And, and when we go wrong or when we 
do things that um that are wrong admit to it and hold up to that because that's the way we want them to be so i think having that 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 kind of of attitude never made me want to control any aspect of the choices that they that they made um and i know what I have done as a young person. And look at me, I got out of it. I came through somehow. And when I look at them, I know they're gonna make mistakes, but I believe in the better good that they will come through it, they will work it out, they will figure it out. And that's my attitude. Sure, no, and, and, a, and a super supportive one. So Sarai, talking about one of those choices, you all, no, if you put up a TikTok and Instagram, the slightest little thing where you're harmonizing with your mom, boom, it's oh, five yeah. seconds. So talk to us a little bit about really sort of deciding, even before we get to high heels, about really kind of going into music and, and sort of embracing it and, and making that decision because it's definitely a, a big decision and, and everybody's so excited. Yeah, um, it, it, it was a big decision. Uh, I went, I got into music when I was 16, uh, like in studio and stuff, but I was always around music growing up. Um, but I started writing songs seriously and really trying to develop as an artist when I was 16. And uh, until 18, I actually, well, when I graduated, uh, I got into a couple of colleges and I was like, all right, Sarah, what do you want to do with your career? And I was, I was about to go to school for, for law and well, just, it was so many options. And so I was like, no, I know I'm not going to want to be a lawyer at the end of the day, which is not anything wrong with lawyers. I, I love lawyers, <laughs> but I know at the end of the day, my passion was music. So I chose to go to a music school and that also helped me develop. And after that, I started really, really recording my music. Like I told mom, I even told Pops, started taking vocal lessons with Pops again. I told my grandma, I told mom, I was like, y'all, I want a project. I want something. I want, I want my career. And I started working on my health. I started working on this music. I started working on everything around me just to develop me into some type of someone. And then me and mom started making little TikToks and those kind of went crazy. And then um, we made some videos, some little clips of me singing started ending up on the internet and like just different things when we went live and stuff, people just, I just started seeing that people were engaging with me and wanting music too. And now that I'm kind of relaxed on recording because everything is recorded now. Um, I'm just excited to put out projects and little things and because this is what I want as my career and, and I love music and I'm so passionate about it. And yeah, I'm just excited for everyone here. Let's go. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, and we're excited too. Um, Willie, talk to us about sort of your perspective um, when that came along, and, and even when the family approaches you with, with projects, um, how do you sort of take that approach in terms of some of the things that you may say or guide or, like I said, sort of shepherd, shepherd the project along and, and kind of negotiate out, okay, here's what I'm going to do or here's what I recommend or I'm going to you know, sit back or send me the music or how that works? Well, it's more or less, I, I, I try to show them a mirror, you know, so when they look, the, if they see that it's something that they really want to do, then that's what I'm for. And that's, that's, the, way I, that's the way I handle it. I, um, if they need me, I'm there. If they don't need me, they will never have to push me out of their situation. You know, unless it's something that I cannot help but try to help. But I've never been put in that kind of position. And another thing that is so good for me is that I have a caring, beautiful, and wonderful wife. And we work together. Um, 
We feed off of each other the things that we need to do. And we've always done it together. And um, I'm blessed because of that too. Aww. Sure. Yeah, no, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, pressure her for sure on a, on a Saturday morning, but, um, you know, we hope to continue some of the dialogue. Sarai, in, like you said, stepping into the studio, um, sort of informally, and then more formally, um, talk to us as best as we can understand, and we never will, but, but what it's like, you know, being able to work with your mom, and just some of the ways that the friendship relationship, but also the reality of creating music kind of evolved. Um, well, stepping into the studio with, uh, someone like my mother, a very, 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 very gifted singer. It's a little bit scary, but then I have to realize, you know, it's mom, so whatever, but it's still her because it's, I've always, like, if you really hear my music, if you hear how I sing, you could tell that I get everything from her and not only like, just because I've listened to her for a literally ever um not even since you know literally a baby right. one day right. one day old I was in the studio so it's it was a little bit scary working with mom a little bit um because she's doesn't care that I'm her kid she's gonna be like do it again do it again do it again I don't care if your voice is straining you better do it again like she's hard thank you can I hear what I want to hear on my live from mm -hmm. my own daughter. You know yeah. I can make you sing you know, with my authority, but I would never do that. No. Please, you have to. <laughs> no. You be going live singing full I don't moon sing. all nonchalant. <laughs> I ain't even gonna cry. <laughs> I ain't even gonna cry. And Punch start. City. Punch City, what up, fam? <laughs> no, I'm not singing the song, Faith, leave. Faith, please, can you see if you was over here? Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, I feel something coming up loose in the back. <laughs> <laughs> please, Sarah, real quick. It's like time to Okay, I'll just give him, you know just how I feel. <laughs> That's all I do. No. Moving inside these butterflies. Darling, can we see you? No. <laughs> Can we see? The, don't play with the the, the, the vocals. You know, people uh -huh. are waiting to to come on there. Expect they expect more from you. Okay, you well then we gotta leave them one. Uh, from That's what I just did. One more time and get Mom, you. Please. Me so confused. You have to get there and not go. <laughs> I'm okay. Thank you so much. Oh my God! This you will not get on my live and not sing something for these. I already say I'm already taking too long with the next album. Go ahead on and give him something else, please. Go on, please, Mama. Not today. Now, 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 now. <laughs> you don't want to sing? Why? This is the time to sing, darling. Is on my. I don't life. want to. Please. We almost up to. To to fifteen k people on here. That is a thousand people, mom. No, you're not joining anything. No, please. Why is so confused? Why is so much lower? Okay, yo, what you about to start with? Cause I need tell me it's for real. I need no. that. You have to do you that. You can go please. listen to. You can listen to it on her Instagram. People That's help all. me make her sing, please. Somebody say it, please in the capital. That's how I feel. Okay, start, start, start over. Right? No, you have to catch me singing. You can't just force me to do it, Mama. Please. No, no, no. People be forcing me to sing. You forced me to sing. Good. A little force ain't hurt nobody. I didn't jump up. I should. Oh my god! I said something. I must. I almost should have said. Go on, Sarah. I don't want to. You, you're, oh, you're going to, and you're not leaving the live. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna get on live and say, say sorry to everybody for your behavior and how you wouldn't ah. sing, even if we, the people be singing. Okay, that. fine. Okay, okay fine. Okay, no. So I'm, let me let me hold. No, it. let me hold it. People want to see you sing, darling. Go now. What part? From the pre chorus. This is a pre chorus. This ain't even a verse. Go, uh uh. <laughs> no. no, no, no. You're not about to be shy with them nails <laughs> on my live. Ma! <laughs> Go on. Okay, which part? 
Mama. I have a nail appointment, but clearly, I gotta get down. Then go downstairs. No, it's, yes. Go. Uh, what? <laughs> Two, three. You. <Yeah. laughs> I can't. <laughs> Who are you right now? <laughs> Two, three. You. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me do the two, three. Okay. Five. Uh, I don't want to. Five. Six. Seven. <laughs> you know. No, no, that's no. That's how. Mommy, just we not. We need to see your face and your edges okay. on this part. My edges are horrible. No, they're not. Um, well, you have them. Go on. Four, two. <laughs> your face. What you trying to say? My face. No, because like, you were like. I was ready for the show. Okay. Again, two, three. No one has to show that kid. You. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I sound bad. Uh, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. You know just how I feel. <laughs> Can't tell me feelings are real. If you don't start from I, that's what I did. Start in my key, John and your key. No, you got the, you got the false streets. You just told me. No, stop. Listen, my life is getting irritated. I was just singing. No, no, no. Don't go at, at forever sanity like that. What I did? That's forever Look. sanity. Ow. Um, that was for you, Verza. Uh, tell me if fans are real. That's my key, too. But you got me so confused. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so I'm doing love you. <laughs> tell me if it's for real. Love that for you. The control. The control. Thank you, baby. Okay. It's good because the music, the outcome of the music is just like, okay, like, maybe we should get mom to work on um a few more songs um and then my mom she she really developed me into a really fast uh singer like very fast if you've ever been in a studio before you can kind of maneuver your vocals and you know there's computer stuff and all this other stuff she won't let me do it she'll make me do it a billion more times right. and um she, she's difficult but she trained she trained me in the studio to now where she trusts me to go to the studio by myself and she knows she's gonna get a good song out of it. But before, <laughs> not so much. She was very, you know, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, and you have to do it this way. And it works. Her her formula, I don't know what it is, but it just it works. And then I've I've gotten the formula a little bit now I'm helping other people I'm not as difficult as she is but um yeah and then sometimes she would relax and we would have fun in the studio but when we were getting this little thing done it was very right. very it's, hard it's, yeah well I, I appreciate the the honesty because the reality is it, it, it it's time which certainly is very important and valuable mm -hmm. um set us up for high heels tell us sort of what the song's about and um Sort of what it means to you and then and then we'll take a listen okay so high heels was or i did that we did that song maybe like a year or two ago uh but my mom originally she just wanted me to sing on her project and i was so happy i was so honored i was like oh my god yes i will do it i'll do it i'll do it and basically what the song is about is is like self-love and self-reflecting and not only being the best you but just being the best in general and just walking in your truth and and walking in in life knowing that you're the baddest one walking in high heels you know what I'm saying and uh it's it's really about finding your worth and knowing your worth and and it's kind of a conversation between me and mom. And we didn't want to do like one of those songs. It's like, I'm your mommy, I'm your dad. Like, right. it's like, it's not, it wasn't how we were feeling. We were both going through what we were going through. And we both felt like that song uh, pushed us in, in a direction where we both felt the best singing it. Uh, it's It was a really, really dope song to say. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs I've ever recorded. But um yeah, that that song was, it was really about finding each other and, you know, 
mom was real difficult in the studio that day because uh, she knew it was going on that album. So uh, it was fun. I got to kind of create, well, I, yeah, I created a lot of the harmonies, which a lot of people don't know. Like mom really let me just creatively just do anything I wanted. And that was fun because I didn't think that, you know, she would, um, she would let me be that creative. I'd actually be like, here's like four or five notes you can hit, but she let me do like the whole nine yards. I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just about self, uh, self-love and just knowing your purpose and walking in it really. Mr. Norwood, obviously all that comes from you and that's why it was so important for me to have you on there. There's this challenge to provide the discipline, which we certainly hear, you know, um, uh, Brandy brings to the studio, but also at that same time to sort of achieve excellence in the product. How do you sort of maybe going back a bit in, in working with them sort of achieve that balance? Because we sometimes hear about, oh, gosh, this person is so, so harsh and it's, it's 14 and 18 hours uh, intensity and others where like, um, so I was saying, OK, we'll just use auto tone and a lot of other features to kind of fix up things and make it sound you know better how do you strike that balance and and what types of things when you were sort of raising them and really trying to get that musical quality out there that really you you feel like th this is why it's such a phenomenal sound this is why the public loves this because it's really music well when she first went into the studio uh when she was very young around 13 14 uh maybe a little earlier um, she learned, she had learned how to sound good by herself because for the most part of her life, for most of her life, she had not sang along with other instruments. She was her own instrument. She knew how to sound good by herself, to sound musical by herself without any accompaniment by other instruments. And so I think that was refreshing to have an artist who sounded good by themselves, just, just knew that instrument enough to do that. And she also saw me work with what, I say uh, hundreds and hundreds of people in the choirs that I formed. I had formed so many choirs and she saw me work with choirs. She saw me work with quartets, quintets, duets, you know, she just saw me work with people and, and, and she took whatever notes that she took uh, and that environment, uh, I guess, propelled her into being, to emulating some of the things that, that I did. But she saw me actually work with other, other singers as she grew up. And I think that's, that's a valuable lesson for her to, to see that. And um, I'm just proud of her because she put it to some good. Sure. Uh, well, a lot of good. And, and so, <laughs> I know you mean that. Um, in terms of being able to, uh, Ms. Smith, really find that um, confidence. We talked about sort of the challenges one faces. The show is called Music and Medicine. And I think a big part of it is because really finding one's self-esteem um, can be challenging when the world is trying to tell us, you should look like this and you should do that. Um, you spoke about kind of going into music uh, really seriously and, and thinking about your health. What was that? What was that spark? What really had you say, you know what, okay, I'm, I'm growing up and I'm an adult and I'm going to take all aspects of my um, life very seriously in addition to my music and my health? Um, it's, it's really just take, health is everything. And I had to really realize that. I had to not be super delusional about it and just say, you know what, I can just be walking in an unhealthy body and get away with it. Um, it's, not, it's not what I wanted. Uh, it didn't really have anything to do with my looks because I knew that I was beautiful if I was the way that I was to the way I am now. Um, it didn't really have to do with any, any of that, actually. Um, even though uh, it did benefit, I get to do more things 
being smaller, uh, it didn't take away from my beauty at all to, to me or to anyone, but um, health. It was really, really important to me because singing takes a lot of breathing and singing your vocal cords. I mean, pop, pops can tell you this. I mean, everything affects everything uh, when it comes to singing. Uh, I just felt that my health was not the best. And when I started really singing uh, every single day in that studio, I felt everything. Uh, when it came to food, I felt everything. If I drank a milkshake before I started singing, my vocals wouldn't be as good as if I ate an acai bowl or hot tea or fruit, or I wouldn't be as up and, and energetic uh, when my health was kind of declining. And I knew it was declining. I knew I wasn't feeding myself the right foods. I knew I wasn't exercising the right way. I knew I knew it and I had to get out of it because I was like, if I'm taking this serious, then my health has to be priority. Um, because how am I gonna sing if there's no life in me? You know what I mean? So everything just uh, played a part. Everything that I did, everything that I wanted, it all came down to my health at the end of the day. And I had to fix it. and. I still am. It's it's a journey. It's every single day. You have to keep going, but um, it definitely helps a lot with everything. Sure. And Mr. Norwood, when you're working with people, because like you said, you have a, a background in physiology and, and were sort of on that medicine road, which is was so excited when we first started talking. I was like, oh my, I can't wait till we get to, to, to catch up. And I can't wait till we meet in person. But we didn't even want to sort of delay things until that time, given all the, the issues that are going on in the world these days. Are there some elements that you try to bring to people in terms of, okay, you need to get some sleep. You need to really watch how you're getting your drink on and, and smoke mm -hmm. certain things because it will, like Sarai is saying, these things will affect your voice and mm -hmm. longevity. So I kind of want to start transitioning into that because you and I spent some time talking about it's one thing to make a hit. It's another to even be out there, but maintaining a journey if you're not taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. what kind of ways do you try to um, work with some of your students on that? Well, on that, uh, the main thing is uh, you just have to be very practical to know that a healthy, look, a healthy voice lives in a healthy body. And that's just the way it works. Um, and taking care of your body is just like taking care of your voice. And whatever shape your body is in, that's the shape that your voice basically is in. And then to see how how artists, um, how the, the whole psyche of what an artist was, the way people saw artists, you gotta be out of your mind to be an artist. You gotta be, you gotta be high all the time to be an artist. That's not necessarily true. And, but that was basically what people really thought, thought about. But a lot of that, I don't really want to get into it because it makes me angry sometimes when I think about how the, 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 how, how some record companies, um, they, they are so after what the product is until they don't really care about who is producing it. Right. Just as long as they get the product that they want. They don't care about that. You have to care about yourself. And if you don't care about yourself, then you're not gonna be able to sustain a, a long and prosperous and healthy career. And so I think the main premise is, is that whatever you're doing to your body, you're doing to your voice. 
Sure. Well, it's interesting that you brought that up because, like you said, it isn't about trying to dish dirt, but one of the main inspirations behind the whole project and this whole music and medicine journey that we've been on has really been trying to begin in a very, very small way, um, but to change that concept because too often we feel like we've lost so many um, great singers because of, as you stated, there may have been detours or mistakes that were made just pursuing a dollar and it didn't really help the artist um, to right. not take care of themselves um, and then it's it's the world's loss it's their family's loss but but more importantly it it, it may have been avoidable and so um, yeah. we really want the, the young artists to um, to sort of appreciate that I love that you said it perfectly you don't have to misuse your body or use certain substances or try to be something that they quote unquote want you to be uh, simply to pursue money because if it's really not healthy it's going to uh, well just like sir i said too your health is your wealth you know uh, <laughs> so uh, we got it we got it we definitely have to take care of ourselves um, Ms. Smith, I want to talk about sort of your your current project um, and um, and what you're working on. I know uh, there have been some some hints about it and, and whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Um, if there's something you want to set us up for to, uh, to take a listen to, um, uh, tell us about sort of what we may uh, expect over the next few months or in the new year. Um, I... I'm working really hard on my music. Uh, I've been working really hard on my music and yes, stuff is coming. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, I'm just being patient. I'm, I'm letting God do his work. I'm following his path, however long it takes. I'm, I'm so happy that people are willing to be patient with me. Um, you know, in the industry, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult trying to maneuver and uh, getting the best for me and my project and what we need. Um, so it's coming, uh, we're doing great work. We're having a lot of progress. The music is really beautiful and it means so much to me. So hopefully everybody will give it a little listen and stick <laughs> with me and still be a little patient. But yeah, I love, I love it. And I hope everyone's gonna love it. I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna love it. I'm just oh yes they will <laughs> absolutely um mr norwood we promised that we wanted to just sort of talk about this concept of legacy and um i think we've hit some of those elements what are those things that you say um and maybe encourage artists with when they may get down or have uh, challenges because just getting through life is certainly uh, always filled with ups and downs and then uh, big things come along like covid and certainly you know shook literally the entire world and certainly you know people in terms of some of the things that they were trying to get done <laughs> um how do you continue to provide that 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 encouraging word and and support um as we realize that everything is not always going to be rosy and perfect yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get my Zoom skills up to the level where yours is, Dr. Lewis. Uh, I, but when I work with artists, uh, even when I work with them on, on Zoom platforms, on virtual, virtual platforms, I try to let my personality come through uh, because I am a mentor. And what I try to do is try to be encouraging to them and to let them know that the mainstay is really believe in yourself, that you were put on the earth with a purpose and try to live it out in the things that you find interesting, that you find challenging and that you can find a passion for. Once you get to that point, then you can work really hard at doing something that you love. And mm -hmm. it's nothing better than doing what you love and get paid for it. That's a good thing. <laughs> I think that's words everybody can live by. We often hear people are doing things they don't love. Um, the last question for you, um, Ms. Smith, and that is, even though you're young, you are able to act as an inspiration um, to young people and young artists. What are some encouraging words you might have for them if they have doubt in their capacity, in who they are, their looks? Because there are going to be days or times or sometimes even seasons where um, things aren't always um, perfect right. what would you um, say to sort of encourage them along um I would say to trust your gut on everything uh 
I had to learn that the hard way. If you feel anything that's wrong or feeling things not right, trust it. It's something telling you not to do something or if you feel really good about something, go for it, do it. Um, just find who you are, walk in your purpose, always have you always are gonna have something to look forward to. You're always gonna to wanna to strive for something and stay on that path. Don't let people or uh, things like you guys said, certain stuff, your health, anything, uh, take you off of your path. Um, everything that you need is right in front of you. So keep going. And um, don't give up on anything. If you have a dream, if you feel like this is your purpose in life, then you fulfill it. And don't let people manipulate you. Don't let people take advantage of you. Uh, if you know who you are, people are going to treat you like you know who you are. And if you don't, act like you do. Because <laughs> people are going to treat you like they know who you are. And they're not going to step all over you. And they're not going to walk all over you if you don't allow it. So um just be who you are be true to yourself be yourself uh there's nobody else like you ever so right. just really 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 find your purpose and stick to it and believe in it um yes. because every single person that you're inspired by they are striving to be the best that they can be in their purpose they're trying to fulfill it so those are some of the things and i'm still doing it too that advice is for me too <laughs> and that's good and i and i appreciate your humility in being able to say that we can all continue to learn and grow from each other and mm -hmm. and it's a journey and it, we will make mistakes i always say we're sort of imperfect people in an imperfect world seeking perfection yes. Um, and um, like you said, survive. We keep our eye on the larger purpose, and and also um, you'll feel comfortable, you know, being able to um, you know, trust our, our higher power and things like that. It's critical. Well, yeah. I'm your host, um, Dr. Moshe Lewis, and this is Music and Medicine. I mean, I've learned so much, and really listening to you all, the take homes I get is that family is everything and so important <laughs> you will have a, right. a rich dynasty um and our goal would be by living in our purpose to have people healthy in some of the choices that they make um, some of those food choices but also more importantly some of the things that we might be smoking or drinking because it's really easy to get carried away and it doesn't take much for that substance to start taking us away um right as we think about or pay homage to, you know, some of the artists that we miss and love, um, who we know were great and many taken, you know, many times before their time. Um, often that was, as both of you spoke to, an industry that really was more focused on the dollar than it was on the dream of, yeah. of having that person uh, really uh, be all they could be um, healthy uh, mentally and physically. So I uh, definitely want to take, thank you all for giving us the time and, um, Putting you. Out, you know, Thank your you. honest comments and, and answers and things like that. I hope that um, we can continue to do it again. We'll continue to maybe expand the people that we have, uh, your wife, uh, maybe uh, Ray J and, and Brandy and things like that, because I think your family so represents this continuing striving towards excellence. There may be uh, something that isn't the greatest of a hit, but you all try so hard to really put quality out there. And I think mm. that's more yeah. important over quantity. So I yes. know you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know so, what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. So uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, thank look you for uh, staying in thank touch. You. And uh, really appreciate you giving us uh, time uh, early in the morning. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> Just let me say, Sarah, thank you for joining me here too. Of course, Love Mom. You. Anything for you. Okay. Love you so All right. <laughs> sure. Okay. Thanks so All much. Right. Okay. okay. Bye bye. All right. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. Welcome to Music and Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. 